office, Peter Williams. From Stargate Atlantis, Chuck Campbell. And whether you liked him as the good guy or the bad guy, we have Alexis Cruz. Thank you. And just in case you guys are wondering, it is me. Um, I'm wearing the dark glasses just in case my eyes go off by accident. I don't want anyone to get <laughs> I say that every time. I can always go with the empathy thing. Try this. Yeah, no, it's I would bad. like to plead the fifth. I will plead the fifth. <laughs> like we're in court. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yeah. All, right. All right. Can you hear us down the back? <laughs> Thanks for having us. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Yeah, thanks for showing up, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on, so thank you for coming to this. Yeah. So uh, we have a couple of you for the first time. We have Alexis back since 2007. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really great to have you. Um, so uh, where, yeah, where are you from? Where are you coming? I guess I should say. And uh, what kinds of things are you doing right now? All three of you. At the same time? No. Yep. <laughs> In chorus and go. <laughs> well, I'm playing tourist. I was here a long time ago as well. It feels like almost 10 years. Did it's at least that long, yeah. I just, I'm just curious when I come to these places, um, how many people here, excluding today, have met me before? So mostly newbies. <laughs> Love it. That is fantastic. Cool. Can you say the same for the other two guys? Who's met? Chuck before. Yeah, there's my parole officer. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows Alexis. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm a virgin. Uh, this is my first Dragon Con, so this is pretty cool. <laughs> so I'm really glad that there's more than nine people here, so this is cool. <laughs> I like it. Da, da, da. She wasn't even born last time I was here. <laughs> <laughs> so what was I, the question? Uh, I, I think most of us have been keeping busy um, with different things. Um, films, TV, theater, guest starring, living life, um, families. Yes. Stuff like that, same as you guys. Uh, pretty much it. Uh, I, uh, in terms of something different for me, I uh, co-created and produced a graphic novel called *The Unprofessionals: A Sociopathic Romance*. Uh, and it's it's uh, it's a dramedy, yeah, uh, about two best friends who decide to uh, become professional hitmen, and they have no idea what they're doing. So they break into it by stealing jobs from real hitmen, and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It came out last year. Uh, it's part of a six-part series. Uh, we had to suspend it for a minute. We had some issues, but I'm happy to say that those issues have been resolved. So we'll be back on track very, very soon. Um, I have a few copies of our original Kickstarter version at my table, so come by and see me. You can come check it out. So that was really exciting for me because we've never done anything like that before and that was a whole learning process that was pretty amazing uh, and we got fantastic reviews for a first time attempt uh, we not a single bad review so that that made us feel really good that's what i've been my biggest accomplishment uh, i quit smoking hey that's big <laughs> it's really big <laughs> <laughs> I have to bruise knuckles to prove it. Uh, Champex. Gotta love it. It's also an antidepressant, so I'm really happy all the time. <laughs> no, I did some research. They gave it to guys that were in prison. They took their cigarettes away and they gave them Champex. And that's what it was. They went, hey, it worked. So they sold it. Yep, to that people. But it does. For those of you on the right there with the confused looks on your faces, he did not say Tampax. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> That's why I had so much difficulty. I tried the patch, but it just keeps sticking to your lip. <laughs> That's a joke. I think a smoke joke. <laughs> Next. 
the last thing I did, I'm not even sure if it's made it to air yet, was a, um, uh, a movie of the week type TV movie thing. Um, and it was intriguingly titled Apple Mortgage Cake. Awesome. Apple Mortgage Cake. And it was about this woman who had her home foreclosed on uh, post-divorce. And she um, baked her way out of a financial jam, no pun intended, by, uh, by stealing one of her grandmother's um, apple pie recipes. So you were part of the strawberry shortcake game. No, I was the ex-husband that she hated. <laughs> Ex-boyfriend. But um, she, uh, she, this story is based on a true story. And I, I, when, I, when I got the audition, I was, um, I was keen to see whether it, whether it was, in fact, uh, a story that uh, anyone would have taken note of. And it's all over YouTube. It's, uh, the, the woman is a real person. And she... Um, has a family and she saved her home by baking her way out of a foreclosure jam. Wow. So um, that's uh, something nice and positive to be associated with. I don't know if it uh, has hit the screens yet, but um, look for me in that couple of scenes. I did one of those, uh, you know, those Saturday night uh, silly movies on sci fi? Like the. the... Yeah, yeah, like Sharknado. Only I did. Deadly Descent, The Abominable Snowman. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, you... I'll give you a little background on this, because it's a really difficult plot to follow. <laughs> uh, the snowman kills my dad, and I go after the snowman. With a cigarette lighter. With a cigarette lighter, yeah. Yeah, you get him. <laughs> yeah, I just throw champex at it, yeah. <laughs> but we went to the coolest place. We went to, uh, believe it or not, Bulgaria. Yeah, we, went, we shot there in Bulgaria. So which was even cooler because when I was there, uh, they had just done bits of Conan with Momoa, Jason Momoa. So they had all worked with Jason. So it was kind of like a nice welcoming, you know, when you get there and you, the crew. But this is no word of a lie. You can Google this, this is true. In Bulgaria, this means no. This means yes. Wow. Let me do that for you again. <laughs> this means no. This means yes. So no, no longer means no. Yeah, so they literally have it reversed. And I didn't know this when I arrived in Bulgaria. So I get to Bulgaria the first day, and I literally, oh, I'm gonna go get a bite to eat. So I leave the hotel, I sit down at this little cafe. I'm like, uh, uh, do you speak English? And she's like, <coughs> so I'm like, okay, just doesn't want to talk to me, no problem. Uh, can I get something to eat? Uh, and she's like, <laughs> so she's saying no to me, but I don't know this. So I sit there and I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> Just kind of sitting around, waiting to get a menu or anything, and this guy comes in, makes a delivery, kind of looking at me. He leaves. I'm like, uh... So I stay there for 40 minutes, and the woman's just there, drinking coffee, smoking cigarette, just... Just ignoring me completely, because she has said, no, you cannot eat here. I go back to the hotel, and I ask the guy at the front, uh, hey, what's the scoop uh, with the cafe down there that you sent me to? She wouldn't give me anything to, to eat or whatever. And I tell him the story, and he's like, ah, oh, this means no, this means yes. I'm like, ah, you're a bullshit. <laughs> and then he gets his phone out, and he Googles it, and it's right there. It's reversed. So try being on a film set. Uh, <laughs> how'd I do? Was I good? <laughs> Just as a joke kind of thing, but my goodness, so it's... That was my little uh, discovery of uh, shooting in Bulgaria. So, yes. And we won four Oscars, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, that's so, going to uh, guarantee him conventions for the rest of his life, you know that. <laughs> Just, <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, in terms of starting, uh, Peter, you played a bad guy, Chuck, you played basically a good guy, Alexis, you played both a good and a bad guy. Tell us a little bit about the, what you remember of the best and worst parts of playing your roles on Stargate. 
Well, unquestionably, and then it, the temptation is to try and come up with a funny answer to every question, but no lie, this is the best part of my, of my role. The, the afterlife, if you will. You know, who would have thought, what is it, 10, 12 years since we shot the last day on SG-1? Yeah. 20 for me, 20 for me. I would... <laughs> 20, <laughs> 20, 20 years since the film. Who so would have thought I'd be sitting next to you guys in Atlanta, staring out at Tokra. <laughs> It, it, the, the afterlife has been the best part for me. Um, it, I wish I knew then what I know now. I would have stolen a Zatnik tell or two. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, hindsight is 2020. Oh, I'm up. Um, I would have to agree. I'm, excuse my language, but I have milked the Stargate tit for the, all it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I have been so fortunate to go all over planet Earth, yeah. and there are fans everywhere, man. Like, it's yeah. incredible. Like, uh, it, it, it just blows me away every single time, just like I did now when I come out, and it's like there are more than four people here. Holy smokes. So, I don't know uh, what it's like for these guys, but I'm pretty sure I have never worked on a project that has had a fan base like this. Ever. Like, it's incredible. Yeah. And from us doing it, if you don't, if you guys don't watch, we don't work. So it was incredible to have the opportunity to actually be involved with something just where that, in my case, the series ran five years, and that was a blessing. Hey, thank you very much. But to actually continue, like you say, the, the post uh, section of it, and to get to meet the fans and listen to them, have a, a interesting conversations and some laughs on the side. You don't get that with any other projects. At least I never did. And sometimes you even get to do a feature film. You don't get it. You, sh you finish, it's done, that's it, it's in the can, bye bye. And what yeah. is it now? 2014 and we're all sitting here talking about it and still laughing and having a good time? I mean, that's, that's gold, man. That is gold. And there's, so. and there's Tokra. And there's Tokra. <laughs> Yeah, so, and what was it like to play a good guy? I would have wore a cowboy hat, I didn't care. I, I would I was just glad to get to push the buttons. And I looked for the most expensive set piece and made sure I was in the shot by it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I echo that for sure. Um, the, the Stargate's been such a phenomenon. This community that's been created on, on both sides is, it's yeah, phenomenal. Um, for me, some of the like one of the biggest highlights for me was the the in the film when we had to when we got the opportunity to learn ancient Egyptian. Uh, that was what we were speaking was as far as we could recraft it, real ancient Egyptian. It hadn't been spoken aloud in three thousand years. We had an Egyptologist consulting on the film. Uh, and this was part of his work, was to verbalize this dead language. Uh, and he had a lot of clues, and there were so many gaps that he didn't have. And one of the, the, the key gaps was he had never worked with, or he, had, he hadn't considered even working with trained actors. And what we all discovered together was that between our skill sets as trained actors, as people trained in communication skills, uh, we were able to fill in a lot of gaps for him. So where he had certain academic assumptions about the tonalities of the languages or the speech patterns of the languages or the, the interplay between the vocalization and the physicality, uh, some of these assumptions were wrong, we found out. And, and we were able to find what the, the truth was through our work with him uh, as trained actors because we understand these things and we understand the organics of human communication and you know the the language was clearly more limited than we have today because it was 5,000 years ago right uh, so we were able to fill in those blanks for him and and at 19 when I did the film this was a really amazing 
thing to be a part of for me because up that till that point I was like, oh, I'm an actor. Let's let's be cool doing stuff. But we actually managed to be a part of something that added to the world's body of knowledge. You know, we were able to participate in something that was legit academically that will now stand forever in history in academic circles. And he and then it was verified by his colleagues, you know, who apparently when they saw the film were like, oh my god, there it is. So to be a part of that is you know, so it's it's for me it's uh, and, and I'm an armchair anthropologist and I was going to I had gone back to school for anthropology, so it was something that I've actually followed up on in my life. So to be a part of that is extra special, you know, and, and, and it makes it makes me realize how what an important thing actors do, how much we contribute to the world. Now to you know Alexis important. is talking as 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 uh, from, from experience the experience of being the only surviving cast member from the movie to make it into the te television series. Yeah. And and sing as singular as that is there was an effort made to carry on with that Egyptology thread into the television series, but it was an incomplete effort. So when we came to shoot the, um, the Children of the Gods pilot, only there was, there was, a, there was a point there where uh, Daniel had to speak some gold and uh, Apophis had to speak some gold and we had two different, uh, different linguists providing assistance to the, to the writers. Mm -hmm. Daniel got the original Egyptology, you know, the, uh, the original language, and by the time the script was rewritten, I had what Alexis referred to as the filling in of the blanks. <laughs> Imaginary dialogue, scripted to sound similar in terms of the apostrophes and the but it was all made up the script the, that dialogue I had so in effect Daniel and I were speaking two different languages but you all didn't know that did you <laughs> here's a little uh, piece of trivia for you in Stargate Atlantis season three every scene that I was in I was actually a hologram <laughs> You don't believe me, but it's true. They do have the technology to do that at the Bridge Studios. I was... <laughs> yeah, because Joe Flanagan used to always be late, so they were like, we gotta come up with some idea. So they started with me, and kind of, you get a little bit of twitchiness sometimes, but most, most people don't really notice it. So it's kind of cool when you can actually be a hologram, and uh, yeah, it's, just, it's just, just something that you could probably put in your uh, blogs or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's for real. Uh, it's season three. You'll notice it when you Chuck, see me. are you here right now? Well, well my question. <laughs> if Visa calls, my name is Ted Nugent. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I, I got to be a hologram, too. I bet you weren't 40 feet tall. No, I was not 40 feet tall. <laughs> no. <laughs> hologram envy? It's a new thing. All right. <laughs> hologram envy. That's right. And the worst part... Have you ever been to Hologram, Alexis? Uh, yes, I have. Excellent. Actually, I have been a Hologram. Uh, recently, actually, in a short uh, teaser trailer for a friend's project. I can't talk too much about it yet. Uh, uh, it's one of those, but yes, I was. I was there. Uh, the worst part about Stargate, my dress. The dress that I had to wear because it was really uncomfortable between the dress and the hot, heavy wig. I would have preferred to have grown my hair out again, but that whole thing was uh, really, really uncomfortable. So that was really the worst of it. I never understood. Uh, I did a, a small little role in Sanctuary where I played a guy with two faces. Thank you. Thank you. I had no idea my mother was here. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But it was incredible because they literally just take this foam head and they put it on the back of my head. And I would watch Chris Heyerdahl go through Wraith makeup and go through and he would be Bigfoot and stuff. And honestly, he was there for like three and a half hours every morning doing this. And all I had to do was literally just sit and, and they put the thing on and glue it on my head. 
And I would go, whoa, how do you do that, man? How do you, every morning, how do you do it? And he said, you just, you just get used to it. But the problem is, with him, he became a character and such, right? I was like a Disney guy on set that everybody wanted to take pictures and like yeah. stick cigarettes in the fake guy's back <laughs> mouth. And the girls in makeup kept putting braids in the back of my hair and, because I can't see anything. So he, uh, when he was doing characters, he could see himself and whatever. And I never ever knew what was going on back there. So that was the weirdest thing that I think I ever did as far as wearing something or what do they call that? Uh, I was going to say pyrotechnics. <laughs> I, I, I meant to say, thank you, prosthetics. Hey, there you go. This, this has been sponsored by Champex. There you go. Okay, so for it, Peter and Alexis, weirdest thing you've ever had to do for stage or screen, that sort of thing? Weirdest. Weirdest. I think Chuck shared his. So. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Weirdest. I was, I was still thinking of another W word, and that weird, was worst. Define weird, yes, or, or yes. give us give us a ballpark of weird. What made you feel the least comfortable as you were laying on stage? How about that? All right, here we go. Okay. I got one. I got one. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I need to save this for the hangover panel on Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to give you an out. I can give you an out. Okay, well, this isn't particularly weird, but this is something that I, um, I, I, uh, I have nightmares over. There was a remake of Twilight Zone, and I appeared in an episode, um, a remake of the Nightmare on Elm Street, I think it was. I had to... In the final scene of the show, Debbie Allen was the director, by the way, and I had always thought very highly of Debbie Allen and uh, was proud to work with her. Um, the final scene of the episode involved a major stunt burning down a house, and uh, I had to trigger the burning down of the house by throwing a Molotov cocktail through the window. All it took was a sure arm and breaking the glass to let the, the flaming bottle go through the window. We had one take to get it in. Ooh, End of the day. That's and the pressure was on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fire Particularly ooh, ooh, since I had bragged about being a <laughs> cricketer in a past life. You can count on my arm, Debbie. Well, I missed. And they had to patch together the shot. And to this day, I can notice it. The viewer wouldn't be able to tell so much, but we lost, I think, a great deal of the drama by the fact that I did not get it through that glass. And I will forever live in a twilight zone. <laughs> Because of that errant arm. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> I'll get over it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've I've been doing this a long time, right? Y'all know that. I've been like yeah. thirty years. So I've the, what I forget. I'm I'm not trying to like squirrel out of it. I'm, I forget half the stuff I've done and half the places I've been. Um, that said, there's, you know, there's certain lines that I don't cross in terms of uncomfortability or too weird. So I don't think I have any, any patented like, oh my God, this was a horrible thing that I did anyway, because from the, from the get go, I, you know, though, when I hit those walls, those lines, I just say no, you know, and I stick to it. That's me. Now, within that, um, there's some in, in terms of regular uncomfortability, and I have to bring it back up again at the hangover panel because by then, I like I'll I'll filter over the weekend to go through because I know there's something somewhere. But in the meantime, there was a, a, a project that I did called the Eddie Mato story uh, for HBO, and uh, and I'd gotten it was, he was a the, it was based on a true story of this kid uh, in the inner city who 
becomes a drug dealer and he's eventually killed by a rival, shot by a rival uh, and paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, this kid later went on to create this, uh, this group that goes around to schools discussing their experiences on the streets with drugs and guns and, and, and it's a whole um, group of paralyzed individuals who do that. So this is a true story and I did and uh, we're shooting this one scene where I get shot and I'm on the cold concrete in New York City and there's blood everywhere and I had to lay there for a few hours as we're doing stuff um, and that was really uncomfortable but what became really uncomfortable was really more for my mom because that morning, we shot through the night, that morning I went home and I didn't bother to clean myself up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was so tired. <laughs> so I go, tie, crawl into bed. <laughs> Mom wakes up, she's going to work. <laughs> Knocks on my door. Hi, did you want some coffee? Are you okay? Oh my, what, what is this? What's going on? Why are you, are you bleeding? I go, I, I'm still asleep. Oh yeah, I got shot last night. <laughs> Because <laughs> most people get shot, come home and go to bed. <laughs> and their mom thinks yeah. that she can cure, make them feel better with a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, at that point, she was freaking out. Oh my God! No, 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 no! The, the movie, the movie. Get him, go away. <laughs> Does anybody in the audience have any questions for us? Yeah, we can go ahead and start doing our cue lines there, Claire and Kelly. Kelly, here. If you guys want to line up. Hi there. Hi. Hey. Hello. Peter, I just want to say you are now my other favorite Jamaican Canadian actor with the last name Williams. <laughs> I love her too. Yes! <laughs> In fact, she just emailed me. Like, I just, I haven't even thought of her for months, but she, I just got an email yesterday, and you know what it said? It said, is this still your email? Uh-huh, uh-huh. She's, she's doing great work on Bitten. Okay. With Laura Vandervoort. Okay. Yeah. Um, quick question. A lot of times actors say they really enjoy playing the villain because of where you can go, what you can do, how. Can you just talk a little bit about the fun part of playing the bad guy? Well, first of all, the fun, for me, it started with the costume. The minute I saw that costume, I go, okay, this is gonna be fun. Then I got it on, and I realized I was really wearing modified ballet shoes. <laughs> um, a skirt. So that was pretty special. <laughs> you handsome devil. Yeah, and you, gotta um, dig, and you gotta dig for that evil. And then I gotta sit in, in makeup for a couple of hours till they finally fine tune the thing down to where they could get it done in 40 minutes and cut out my overtime. Um, it was, uh, you, you know, the, the fun. I, I was describing this to someone in the in the in the Walk of Fame just now. Um, you know, our, our parents raise us to be upstanding, good people. And so there's always that other side of you that wants to cross the tracks, you know, and, um, and live on the edge or, uh, you know, be a, you know, girls want to be bad girls, guys want to be bad boys because they figure that's what's really interesting. We get paid to do it. So it's, it's got that built-in, you know, value to it that, um, that you can't deny. Um, you know, when you get to look at somebody like uh, Richard Dean Anderson and say, fool, I will kill you. <laughs> you get a certain rush. It's, you know, there are some of us that are pacifists at heart that, um, that argue against everybody owning a gun. That's me. Well, you put a gun in my hand, and I feel pretty powerful. <laughs> you understand? There's this yin-yang uh, dichotomy to it. 
that is um, that's inevitable. So it's it's somewhere in that territory, man. That's where I'd place it. Yeah, thank you. Good question. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering what your thoughts are on the movie reboot. Uh huh. I missed, I missed the back end of that question. What was the back end on the... The, the Stargate reboot. Oh, reboot. Movie. Yeah. Well, we're all available. I have my resume. <laughs> if you know Devlin, I think for sure... Apophis never died. Woo! Um, Apophis! Uh, and you still, they already got the costume. They I still have, yeah. You fit the costume. Exactly, I haven't aged a day. Uh, I, think, I think I'm a shoe in and Alexis, just for continuity, ought to be there. I'm going to be in it as a hologram. <laughs> or a snowman. Or, or a snowman. <laughs> a smoking snowman. Yes. Yeah. No, you're not smoking anymore, man. I know, but it's not a, even it's, not it's screen. We won't allow it, will we? A hologram. Yeah. The hologram will look right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's a match. I think, I think the uh, franchise deserves another leg, and um, uh, I, I do think a little bit of a nod, to, even if it's humorous, to the um, previous incarnations would be right on the money. Does, sorry, uh, you guys probably know, does MGM still own the rights? Yes. They still own the rights for yes. Because they're doing better now, right? I mean, things are gonna... I mean, in that sense, they still own the rights for it, so... Mm -hmm. So that's probably a good chance. All right. Mm -hmm. Better than they were, well, yeah. What was it like to work with Richard Dean Anderson and Michael Shanks? They were horrible. <laughs> Just... Ah, what? <laughs> Nightmare. Does somebody have a crush? Which... Which, which Cause one? I thought they were the same person there. Yeah, while. which one was which? <laughs> <laughs> How long can you keep that up? Richard Dean Anderson is the one that's retaining water now. <laughs> I think that's how he put it. It makes him a better scuba diver. Yes. <laughs> like a puffer fish. <laughs> I, I just saw Shanks not too long ago. Uh, I went to see a play. Um, Lisa Ryder was in the play. She used to be in Andromeda. And uh, Shanks and his wife, uh, Alexa Doy, they were at the same play as audience members watching it. And I bumped into Shanks. He's a nice guy. I think he's in, he was going off to Toronto to do that doctor show, wasn't he? Is mm -hmm. it still, what's it called? Saving uh, what is it? Saving Hope. Saving Hope! That's where he went. He, they, yep, he was off to do that. Yeah, no, we, we can totally make fun of them because they're actually really cool. <laughs> they were, we, we got along great with, with both of them. Um, RDA has got one of the sharpest wits around. You know, I mean, it's natural for him. Uh, and he's very, uh, very humble with it. Uh, Michael Shanks is... Uh, an actor I respect tremendously. I could not personally spew out that kind of dialogue week in, week out. Mm. So I respect him immensely. With a straight face. Yeah. yeah. And, it, it, and in all seriousness, he's a very good hockey player. Just so you know, there's a little bit of trivia for you. <laughs> Kelly's mine. Oh, sorry. What was your first convention that you attended and what was the most memorable thing? That's a good question. I think I know you. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. My first convention was in Sydney, Australia. Whoa. Christopher Judge pulled out. Whoa, wait, right there. Stop right there. Revenge. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah. If anybody remembers the panel. Really? That's, 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 the, that's the story right there. Just dot, yeah. dot, dot. Christopher Judge pulled out. That's it. <laughs> Chris, uh, that's for you. And the rest, the rest for the hangover panel. <laughs> Uh, you're not going to top that. Gonna top yeah. that. No, that yeah, that's it. End of... We're, we're done. We're done. <laughs> uh, I was uh, very... I was playing soccer uh, with Paul McGillian. And uh, we were just talking after the game. And uh, he was off to London, England. Uh, and he was like, 
hey man, Chuck, why don't you come to the convention with us? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he was like, we go to these uh, conventions, we get to meet the fans, and you have to take pictures, and you sign, and you just hang out and get to meet everybody. I'm like, uh, how, what, when, when do you, how do you do that? And he was like, I'll make a call and see. And so Paul made a call to the guy who was doing it in London, England, and the guy called me back and said, uh, you'd be more than uh, welcome to come. So that was my very first uh, convention. And so, yeah, I kind of, Paul McGillian kind of pointed me in the right direction. And then I went to my first one and I was very nervous to be honest with you because I didn't think I was really supposed, I, I, I mean, I was, I was, <laughs> I didn't think anybody would know who the hell I was. <laughs> like, in all seriousness, so it was gonna be very embarrassing in the sense you'd walk out and they'd be like, hello. Like, you know, where's the rest of the cast? So, and I walked out on stage and they were huge applause. They knew the episodes that I was in and they knew the one line that I said all the time and, and what buttons I pushed and, and the order that I put. Like, they knew more about the character than I did and so it blew me away and that's how it started and yeah. So it was really just like how I got the part in the sense, right place, right time, and I got two goals in that game, just so you know, so that probably helped. We won. And it's called football. <laughs> Sorry, yes, you're right, yeah, football, sorry. My first uh, show was also in England. Um, I don't remember the name of the show, but the promoter and I are really good friends to this day, um, really close friends. So you know, after so many years. Um, but it was in England, and I remember being just blown away by the enthusiasm of, of the crowds, and that was my first exposure to, really to fandom in general, because even though I'd, I'd been a, a, a I, I grew up as a geek too, the whole idea of going to conventions, like I hadn't been exposed to that, much less on, on this side of the table, you know? Um, so it also like Chuck, it was, it was intimidating, be like, do, do people care? And then you see that people do, and it's like, oh my God. And, it's, and it's, it's overwhelming that first time. And it was so overwhelming that I had to, um, I, had, I had to, when I went back to my hotel room at the end of the weekend, uh, and my girlfriend at the time and I, we had, we, we laid down on the bed, and we started jumping on the bed, and we took all of the cash that we had made, that I made that weekend, <laughs> and just, oh, 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 just, you know, cash, cash, ah. And there was something really therapeutic about that, just to process that whole thing, to have that experience, because even though I grew up in the Bronx, I wasn't a drug dealer, we didn't have cash on hand, you know? So there was like, oh my God! And then it's England, so everything was like doubled for us as Americans. <laughs> That was, and I remember uh, they, that was the first time I heard the expression, it said a line, because it was in England, they called it a cue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so for about 10 minutes there, I was faking it till I could make it kind of deal, because they were like, Chuck, you should see the line, you should see the cue you got. And I'm like, cue, am I supposed to sign cue? What do I say? Do I put a cues? And I'm thinking this all in my head, and I'm like, huh? And they're like, the cue, the cue was like huge. It's, you're gonna be here for a while. And I'm like, oh yeah, the, the cue. And I'm thinking, is that something that I said in the show or what? And I realized, oh, you mean line up. Oh, I'm an idiot. Thank you. What did you do when you had to go to the loop? When I went to the loo, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so this isn't a question, it's a very quick share, I hope. My son is autistic, and um, I'm not sure if you know, but most autistic kids, they do something called stimming so they can keep in their own world and not have the outside world press in. Stargate was the first series where he would literally stop stim stimming and pay attention. And it actually promoted his development and got him out of that world. He is now a young adult, and you guys are his favorites. He loves Stargate, he loves the movies, he loves it all. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think uh, that's, that's I, I, want, I want to know what that word is. Stimmy? Stimming. 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 Skimming. Skimming. Some kids, they um, don't bang their heads. Right. Okay. Okay. And it would basically help him to shut out the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for Stargate, he would set those down. And he owns the TV show, he owns 
Fantastic. That is fantastic. He knows who all of you are. Love that story. Even him? Even Chuck? <laughs> do, I, do I owe you some money? Do I owe money? Is that what it is? <laughs> Damn. Go ahead, Claire. Um, yeah, Peter? Yes, ma'am. You're back again. Thanks. Um, I'm just, just wondering, um, like after doing Stargate and some of the other things, what was it like going into like dark comedy on Dead Like Me and working with that cast? Oh, thank you so much for bringing that up. You know, um, after Stargate, I think Dead Like Me is the one I get most props for on the street. I had no idea how popular that show was when I got the gig. Um, what was the question? Sorry? <laughs> I'm just glad you reminded me of it. with that cast. All right, well, let me tell you, it, I, the comedy didn't really stretch over onto my character. My character was a serious guy who was trying to get laid, basically, <laughs> and was about to when they canceled the damn show. So don't oh. mind me anymore. <laughs> um, the, ca the cast was wow. fantastic. I, um, Cynthia Stevenson I, it was, was, uh, was my love interest. And she kissed real good. <laughs> and Christopher Judge pulled out. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. dot, dot, dot. <laughs> but and I was. I, when they. <clears throat> I think Kleenex is on sale. Kleenex is on sale. Aisle six. Aisle six. Kleenex is on sale. <laughs> they, they, uh, they made a movie and they didn't call me, so I'm really annoyed about that. But I don't think that movie did well. <laughs> oh, because you weren't in it. Yeah, Say that again. Yes, it, yes. It wasn't a complete reassembly of the cast. Sorry, say that again. Exactly, but let, let me tell you one more thing about that before I go. I came across, after it was cancelled, I, 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 re, I, not resented, it's the wrong word, I uh, regretted it, I, I, I missed it. So I went Googling to find um, whatever I could about that show, and then I found, I found a thread in a, in a forum about my character, whose name was Angel, Angelo, Angelo. And the entire thread, four pages of it, was a debate, nay, an argument, about whether I was a good guy or a pedophile, trying to get to the kid. I couldn't believe it. Luckily, the good guy comments won out. But some people actually thought I was a pedophile trying to get to the woman's kid. Can you believe that? And they had the nerve to cancel the show without resolving that issue. I would have set them straight. <laughs> I, had, I had a woman send me a, a thing that she wrote her own books about the Stargate people, mm -hmm. like Stargate characters. Fan fiction, yeah. And, yeah, fan fiction. And yeah. I was, uh, Lauren, Kevin Smith, and my character were lovers. <laughs> well, you're lucky you didn't get Michael Shanks. <laughs> because most of the fan fiction I read out there has Michael Shanks in the clinch with handsome devils there like you. Knows, eh? I've known all over the galaxy. Pegasus? Ah, that's just a part of it. Last question, Kelly. So there's an asteroid plummeting towards Earth. We'll have a near miss in 2029 and 2036, and it's named Apophis. How do you deal with that? <laughs> You've done your research, girl. And you have a job when we leave here. You're gonna be my publicist. The people who discovered, for those who don't know, the people who discovered this asteroid were giant Stargate fans and they decided because this damn thing circles Earth and comes back every now and then, they had the bright idea to name it Apophis. Which, in effect, guarantees me some attention all the way to, to Doomsday. <laughs> all the way to Doomsday. 
Is it 29? Is that the year? 2036. 2036. Oh, I wasn't going to pay my taxes. What? <laughs> 2029, it's supposed to swing by so close to Earth that the gravitational pull for Earth is supposed to alter its orbit so that when it comes back again in 2036, it's going to smack into depending on what you read, Siberia, Moncton, New Brunswick, or, okay, yeah. <laughs> wherever you may be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look up, look way up. Um, American scientists have uh, ruled the um, probability very, 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 very minuscule to unlikely. Russians have it at a 2% chance. Um, so I'm siding with the Russians. And I'm, and I, and I'm printing up t-shirts saying, <laughs> Apophis returns. No, I have one that says 2036 on the front and on the back, Apophis returns. <laughs> well, uh, with that question and that answer, we are kind of out of time, unfortunately. Um, if you are going to the next Supergate panel with the Universe guest, it is downstairs. You'll want to kind of scurry on. Uh, we do want to thank Alexis and Chuck and Peter.